What's up, everybody? This is Danny. This is the Nokia Lumia 1520. This is one of the most powerful Windows phones ever built, but with this humongous six inch display, it's one of the biggest phones ever built. And it matches up with all of the other phablets that are out there right now, including its Android counterparts. But in Nokia style, they wrap it up in a beautiful polycarbonate plastic body and give you the Zeiss optics. So let's do a quick hardware tour. On the right side, you will find the dedicated camera key, which I love about all Windows phones the power button and the volume rockers up and down. Up top you will find a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with some microphones and on the opposite side you will find where your SIM tray lives and an SD card slot which is very very cool. On the bottom of the back you will find some pogo pins for the wireless charging plate that you have to buy separately, the speaker and the micro USB. Of course, you cannot forget the star of the show, which is the 20 megapixel pure view Zeiss camera with dual LED flash on the back. And we'll definitely go over image quality later on in this video. And on the front, you will see the AT&T branding since it's exclusive to AT&T in the United States, the speaker, the appropriate sensors, and the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. Towards the bottom of the screen is the very familiar capacitive back, Windows Home, and search buttons and they do all of this in a fairly thin package. It's a little bit bulky, but it definitely looks premium. Even though that this is a ridiculously large phone, it actually fits pretty good in the hand. I have average size hands and I'm able to grip this without a problem, but one-handed use is probably not a go here because it's just hard to reach your thumbs across this huge panel. So it's definitely a two-handed device. So if you have small hands, then this is probably not the device for you. The build quality though is absolutely fantastic. It's got rounded edges on here with a smooth polycarbonate plastic back and it feels really good in the hand. It does get a little smudgy with fingerprints sometimes, but I really like the way it feels in the hand. It's significant and it feels good and solid in the hand. The most notable thing about a device is the display. And this six inch 1080p display does not disappoint. It equals to 367 pixel per inch and it's very clear. The color replication is fantastic. The viewing angles are great. So this is one of the best mobile displays that I've seen on a larger device. The 1520 comes preloaded with the Nokia Black update and it has some cool new features such as the ability to shoot in RAW, some new glance features, and the ability to kill apps. If you want to know more about the Nokia Black Update, then make sure you check out my 1020 What's New on the Nokia Black Update, and I'll leave that link in the description section below so you can check it out. Another notable thing about the Nokia Lumia 1520 is it's not being underpowered anymore. It has the powerful Snapdragon 800 processor with 2GB of RAM and the latest Adreno graphics. And of course you don't need this to play Flappy Bird, but Flappy Bird is still available in the Windows Store as of the making of this video. And I had a lot of fun playing it, but I also had a lot of frustration playing it. So let me know if this is you. All jokes aside though, the new silicon definitely shows the power of the 1520 when you're playing graphically intensive games. And the only problem is that the marketplace really does not have that many games. It is definitely getting better on selection though. It's a little bit pricey still compared to the Android and iOS counterparts, but any game that you throw at it in the marketplace is definitely going to play on this just fine. What this equates to is that this thing is a multimedia powerhouse. It has a big, beautiful six inch display with very powerful internals. And I loved watching videos on this. Movies, TV shows, all that stuff was vibrant on the screen. You know I love to watch YouTube videos. So I was catching up on Mac Mixing's Galaxy Tab Pro 8.4 Remix, which you should definitely check out. So if you are a multimedia junkie like I am, then this definitely is the Windows phone for you. Web browsing was very nice. And on this screen, the text is just superb. Reading was definitely a pleasure on this device. And the outdoor visibility is also pretty good. It's got a pretty decent screen when it comes to brightness. Now, this thing is running off of the AT&T LTE network. So it does have 4G LTE connectivity. And I found the connectivity to be very stable. And I found it to be very consistent. And the phone call quality is very good. Even though this is a large device, the earpiece is nice and clear and loud. And I had no drop calls at all on the AT&T network. So the phone call quality 
was definitely a pass go. The entire experience is wrapped up with its large 3400 milliamp battery and I had to say that the battery life was very good on this device. When I first started out it was kind of inconsistent, I actually had it die a little bit faster but after I used it a little more definitely the battery life got better. Now if you use this as a primary device it's definitely going to get you through a full day but if you use this as a secondary device like I did in the last week it'll last you a couple of days so the battery life you will love on the 1520. So if you are a road warrior and you have business stuff to do, that means you can work on more PowerPoint presentations and you got built in Word and Excel, all that stuff to do all that businessy type stuff. Or you can be like me and just play Flappy Bird and run down your battery. Which one is it? Flappy Bird. All right, well, I know the real reason that you're here to see this review because you wanna know how good is this 20 megapixel Carl Zeiss lens? And you want to know, is it as good as the Lumia 1020? Well, the good thing is that the experience is the same as their flagship camera phone, the Lumia 1020. It's got the Nokia ProCam app where you have a whole bunch of manual controls so you can go ahead and adjust to your heart's content. And it also has all of the camera integration, like your smart camera and all of that, all into one app, which I really appreciate. Makes the camera experience much, much better than it was prior. They did not cheap out, it does have optical image stabilization, so that two-stage shutter key definitely helped with the experience, and Nokia Black enables you to shoot in RAW, which is great, and it looked great when you take them off of the actual camera themselves when you get a good picture. That is the real downside of this camera. Now, it is capable of taking some phenomenal shots, and as you can see here, the detail is nice, and it just looks great and it is comparable to the 1020 in certain shots. But the one thing that I've noticed about this camera is the inconsistency. And as you can see, it's got great bokeh effect and it just color replication is pretty good. And especially indoors, this is with no kind of manual settings or anything. This is shot completely in auto mode. Please note that you can change the manual settings to get better pictures, but I'm looking at it from an average consumer perspective where you're just going to point and shoot. And I notice a lot of noise in these pictures, even in decent lighting, and it tends to oversaturate the colors, which the 1020 also had a problem with before, and just the lack of color replication on certain shots. Now the low light performance is also a mixed bag. In some of the shots, I got very detailed and good color replicated photos, but in some situations with the same amount of lighting, I got very noisy pictures. It just doesn't make any sense. I am sure that all of this can be corrected with just a simple software update, and Nokia is known to bump up their camera firmware all the time on their Lumia lines. The 1080p video is also passable. It's not the sharpest 1080p video that I've ever seen. And the focus is very inconsistent. As you can see here, it's focusing a whole bunch. And here it's doing the same thing. And what's great about this is you can shoot in different frames, 30 frames, 24 frames. So that's pretty nice. And the optical image stabilization does work. Look at me walking down some steps here. And it's a very good job of steadying the video. So the optical image stabilization is a plus. But here you can see that the focus is very inconsistent. Sometimes it focuses too much and sometimes it just doesn't focus at all. Weird, right? So hopefully they will push out a software update very soon. It is definitely better than your average camera though, so don't be scared to buy this if you are a camera-centric person. Well, let me wrap all of this up by saying that this is the best Windows phone device that I have ever used. It's got a fantastic 6-inch HD display, which is a pleasure to view anything with, and it's got the latest Nokia Lumia Black update, powerful internals, and a inconsistent camera, but definitely better than normal. This is probably the most comprehensive Windows Phone experience you will get, so if you like Windows Phone, then you're definitely going to need to consider this. On the other hand, people switching from Android or iOS might have a little bit of a problem due to the app selection. Now the app selection is getting much, much better. You have all of your social stuff, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, but sometimes these apps just aren't up to par like the other platforms. But Nokia does a great job of bundling a bunch of software so it'll make your Windows phone experience a lot better. They have a sleuth of awesome and productive apps that you get exclusively with Nokia phones. 
The multimedia experience was fantastic on this phone. The screen is phenomenal. The touch response and everything on this device for multimedia is great. Now you just gotta know your limitations. The 20 megapixel camera is not as consistent as it should be. The device is fairly large and it is a little bit bulky so you have to watch out for that. But if you know the limitations, this is one of the best Windows phone options that you have out there. And I definitely recommend it, especially if you're looking for a Windows phone. Well, that does it for me, guys, with the review of the Nokia Lumia 1520. Let me know if you enjoyed this content and let me know if you like the Lumia 1520. If this is your next phone, let me know in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more videos like this one. And thank you for watching, guys. Thanks for the support. And I will see you guys very soon in the next video.